Hey there everybody, Professor Tomney back with a, another Chem Complete lesson. This is a second practice session for naming alkanes. So make sure you go back and you check out the lecture if you haven't seen that already in regards to naming alkanes. There's also another practice session that came before this one, so you can check that one out if you need additional practice. This is the second one. So we're going to be moving through this one pretty quick. So what you need to do, go ahead and pause the video your job is going to be to look at all four of these, assess them, and come up with the proper IUPAC name. So go ahead and pause the video, and we will reveal the answers in just a minute, and I will see you guys then. All right, welcome back, everybody. So for the first compound, the parent chain would be a cyclohexane. That's actually, we'll hold off on putting that so I have enough room. So the parent chain is going to be a cyclohexane. You have a bromo and a chloro right next to one another. So the numbering doesn't matter that much. I'll go ahead and do the one with the bromo and the two with the chloro in this case. And so what I'm going to end up with is one bromo. And remember, this is not numerically. I am listing this alphabetically. So B comes before C. So one bromo. 2 chloro cyclohexane. Okay. The second one, if we take a look here, we would have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 carbons. So we're dealing with an octane. The numbering should go from right to left. So I should see 1, 2, three, four, five, to get the lowest set of numbers. So bromo is going to come before ethyl, which is this group up here. So the way that I would write this is two bromo, and then five ethyl, or the other substituent. And then again, we had an octane. We counted up a total of eight. So I would just finish this off as octane. Coming up and looking at the next one, the longest chain is certainly the one that is going from left to right here, and the numbering should also go this way. So let's see what I have. One, two, three, four. So I'm going to have a two, four in terms of my positioning. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I have a nonane in this case. Uh, this group right here would be an isopropyl and I have a dichloro, both of which are in the two position. So remember, when we label isopropyl, we use the I alphabetically speaking. So if I wanted to name this entire compound, the chloros are going to come first as C's. And so what will end up happening when I name this, I'm going to state 2,2, two, two because both chlorines are found in position 2. So 2,2 two, two, dichloro. Okay, and then in position four, I would put four isopropyl. I'm continuing this on the next line here, down here, nonane would be the last portion. And that would be the proper name for that third structure. The fourth one is uh, arguably the easiest of the bunch, although the first one was pretty easy too. We only have one substituent, which is this alkyl substituent here, this should be easily identifiable as a T-butyl group for you guys. So you could have put tert-butyl or you can put T-butyl, either one. Just remember if there was something else present here, we're labeling by the B, not by the T in this case. And if you're confused by that, go back and check out the lecture that we had earlier on naming alkanes. So this is going to be T-butyl and then the main uh, cyclic compound here is a cyclopentane. So it would be T-butyl cyclo pentane. And there you go. Those would be the answers that you should have for naming these compounds. So hopefully this video was helpful. As always, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys for the next lesson. Take care.